To all the geeks and nerds, welcome to another episode of Dissected Minecraft and the dynamic duo are here again and we're going to talk you through um, a bunch of uh, a bunch of uh, redstone as uh, yeah we have been doing for the last few weeks. So Methods, how are you doing? All right? I'm doing great, how are you doing? <laughs> yeah. I'm doing great as well. <laughs> okay, so this week we are going to be talking about some common circuits that might be useful uh, in a whole bunch of different contraptions. That's the, the, the topic for today. But uh, yeah, as we have been doing for the last few weeks, we're going to go through uh, some challenges. So we had a whole bunch submitted and we've picked a couple uh, to talk about. And this first challenge is from uh, Capix and he submitted this on Reddit. So let's talk you through this one. So Capix actually submitted a whole bunch of different ones. Um, I just picked out one uh, just, just for showing off. Now this one is is a NAND gate. Now, let me see if I can get this right. So in this case, the lamp is always on unless both levers are actually in the on position. So at the moment they're both off because they're up. So if we turn this one down, the lamp stays on. And if we turn this one down, the lamp goes off. But otherwise the lamp will stay on in all other combinations. So I think that means that's a NAND gate. So well done, that was really good. <laughs> so Nethers, do, do you wanna take the next one? Okay, we have another NAND gate. So the only difference here with this one is it's actually detection based. So instead of levers, here we have a chest and two comparators. And it just means if there's an item in the chest, first one, nothing will happen. And only if in the second one is an item as well, then the lamp will actually turn off. Yeah, pretty cool. There's a couple of redstone torches underneath there. Yeah, pretty cool stuff, pretty cool stuff. And then we've got we've got my one. So this is my. So I've done a, a really cool. This is going to blow your mind. Uh, this is a knot gate. So here we have a lamp that is off at the front, and the lamp at the back that's on. Now if I flip the lever, the one at the back will at some point then go off. There you go. It worked. <laughs> now, how this one works is we use a zombie, and this zombie is uh, called Methods. <laughs> So here we have a zombie in the middle and uh, zombies are attracted to turtle eggs. So what will happen is uh, as, you as you flip this lever, we alternate which, uh, which turtle egg we, we uh, allow the zombie to see. So he will only aggro to a turtle egg if there are uh, two air blocks above it. So in this case, uh, there's this one on the left that uh, he's aggroing to and he'll still walk, even though he can't get to it, he'll try and walk close to it. But then of course he'll stop. And then likewise, when we show this egg on this side, he'll try and walk towards it and then it'll stand on a pressure plate and uh, yeah, activate that lamp. So there you go, that is, uh, that is my one. <laughs> okay, and then lastly, we have uh, another really cool XR gate from Samus Dessage. So if we turn left input on, lamp turns on. If we turn right input on, lamp turns on, but if both are on, lamp is on. Very nice, very nice Samos. Thank you very much for that one, very good. So yeah, if you want to uh, look at some of the other submissions that were sent in, then get on over to uh, Reddit. They're all on there and yeah, you can check them out. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the topic for today and that is uh, some, some, common some common circuits that uh, you might use in your contraptions. So we'll, we'll take you through some of these and uh, yeah, talk about them as we go. So over to you methods, I guess. <laughs> okay, so first of all, I think we already saw this here before and I think even in the second episode or even in the first one, our standard monostable, what does it do? It converts a constant signal into a pulse, and it can also be used as a rising edge detector. So what's the rising edge? That's basically just when the redstone turns on. Right. So when this here turns on, we get a signal, and when it turns off, we don't get one. Ah, uh, right, right. So yeah, so terminology is something that I, I struggle with a little bit. So I've heard that terminology before. So rising edge means detecting when there's, when the redstone is on, right. Okay, so that's, okay, I see that, right. Okay, that makes sense, good. Here, this might make it a bit more obvious to see as another rising edge detector. So when the observer rises up, uh, we get a signal. But not when it goes down. When it goes down, exactly. Awesome. Here we have one that works on both edges. So it's a rising and falling edge detector. So when we turn it on, we get a signal. When we turn it off, we get a signal. Perfect. Okay. And then we have a few T flip flops here. So the most, I think by now the most basic one is just this here an observer into a redstone block. Converts a pulse into a constant. So with the T flip flop, that's where, it, like, so here we've pressed the button and we've turned the lamp on and it stays on, even though the button then depowers. 
it's basically the, the opposite of the monostable. So instead of converting a constant signal into a pulse, we convert a pulse into a constant signal. Oh, yes, of course, because the redstone, redstone block is moved into a power, into the fully on state, exactly. and then we move it away. Right. We have a few more examples here. So for example, here's a very basic one. I think Mambo actually came up with this one. Mm -hmm. So if you look in the dropper with the button on, we have an item. Right, yep. And every time we click the button, it goes up into this top dropper, then mm -hmm. into the hopper, into the bottom dropper. Right. And if we now click the button again, we've reset the circuit, the item is in the middle dropper again. Right, and the comparator is detecting the item when it's in that bottom, that comparator just bottom dropper. In every single, every second cycle, it will be in this dropper. Right, okay, that's cool. Very good. What well a Mumbo. Here's, a, <laughs> here's another super old school one, actually. I'll tell you who came up with this. Okay, so what's happening here? Just, so with this one... just works with the way pistons update. Right. So it, it will switch direction every single time. So does this matter how you build it? Like, is it directional nope. at all? No? Okay. That's no, completely... Okay, awesome. And then here we have a repeater locking based one. So maybe we should also introduce repeater locking while we edit. I think we've never talked about this. So let's just say we have a repeater here with a lamp mm -hmm. and we just power it. Yep. Just turns on. Yep. Now, if we feed another repeater into this repeater from the side, it has to be a repeater. Okay. And we power this. Then you can see this turns into this bedrock texture here. Mm, yep. And it means this repeater is locked. So if I now turn this here off or just even remove it, it will ah. still stay on. Okay, right. There is the basic tutorial tutorial of repeater locking. Right. You can lock a repeater in its state. Same works for turning off. So if we turn this lock this here and turn this on, we will not get an output. Ah, perfect. Perfect. I was, I was just about to ask that, that very question, but yeah, awesome. Okay. So then with that, with the power, with that knowledge. Do you want to go through it or should I just explain? Okay. Let me, tr okay. Let, let me try. Let me try. Let me make a fool of myself. <laughs> so with this one, so we're going to press this button, which depowers the torch, which depowers uh, this repeater. Okay, so when it's in its off state, it's locked because the power is going into it, into the side of that repeater. So it's always locked until we the, until we press the button which uh, depowers it. So that unlocks it. And then ah, so this torch that's here is then power is right. So this torch that's under here is powering the powering this lamp, which is also powering this uh, this repeater right here, which is on um, uh, eight game tick delay. The power of that goes into this repeater, but that's been ignored because it's locked. But when we depower it, it the, the power can then go through, which depowers the torch, which turns the lamp off. Basically, we just have a clock here. Oh, and we use clock. this yeah. repeater to just unlock it shortly enough so it can switch state once. Ah, right, yes. So these clocks always go on, off, on, off, on, off. And we just keep it locked and only unlock it long enough so it can switch once. Right. Smart. That was a much smarter way of ex explaining what I tried to explain. <laughs> here you can see every time the repeaters which are on and right. which is off, gonna switch every single. Time. See, yeah, yeah, got it, got it. Okay, then next common circuit, mm -hmm. we have the ABBA gate. So maybe as a quick demonstration, we just turn this on. Mm -hmm. And you can see the yellow block going up first, blue second. And if we turn it off, blue will go down first, and then yellow second. Yeah, okay. And it's called ABBA because it's it's A, then B, then B, then A, right? Exactly. Yeah. It's using the same feature here with the repeater locking. Right, so with this one we power, let's see if, let me see if I can explain this one. So we turn the power on, which immediately powers the yellow, the yellow block. That's why it goes up first. And at the same time, we power this, this repeater over here, which has got a delay on it, which goes around 
which powers this uh, blue block second because it's just on the delay. So that's how the first part of it works. Then when we depower, this state, this because that was locked from before, we, we, it doesn't depower, it keeps its state. But then depowering this, this piston means that um, uh, it will unlock and then it will lose its power once, it's, once the lock has been removed. So then exactly. that comes down afterwards. Okay. All right. I think I've got that one. <laughs> and here we have a few more ones. This here is probably makes it easier to understand. Mm -hmm. So as soon as we flick the lever, this redstone dot here, which yep. powers this powers this piston. Yep. And then we have two repeaters on full delay, mm. powering this redstone dot, which powers this piston. And they also get we get an output on the bottom here into two more repeaters, which keep those here powered. Mm. Therefore, we kind of make a little loop. I see. Yeah, yeah. Makes sense. Here's another version how you can do it. So here we just use the feature of slabs cutting the signal. So it cannot power itself and keep being powered. Okay, so this one, so we power this, right, so the ye yellow one goes up first again, so that, that redstone line goes up here and powers that one straight away, that makes sense. It also goes, which way are these repeaters for? So it goes this, this one, way. The bottom face is blue. Yeah, so bottom one faces the blue, which then powers the blue one secondly, so then they're both powered, and then when we depower, it, what happens on the depower? So we'll have depower it. Basically, this repeater here on the top keeps it extended for eight extra game ticks. Oh, right, because it's going so around. This oh, I see, yeah. Here. It goes around that loop. And just the delay of that keeps that one. Okay, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, perfect. And then last episode, we got some comments that people would have liked to see some more uh, basic uses for it. They liked that we showed the, the gates, but not really what you can do with them. Mm -hmm. I mean, for these circuits here, it's a little bit harder, but I tried to add something. So the, the most basic thing for an ABBA gate would probably be this here. Mm -hmm. You want to twice push a block and then on the retraction, do the same, but on different timings. Yeah. And I mean, you can use something like this in, in so many things. I mean, in doors, in, in your trap doors, in the floor, mm -hmm. in all kinds of redstone contraptions it's it's rather hard to give examples because there's so much yeah yeah and it's usually very specific your your need case would you use something like this for like a, a block swapper or is that something different that's exactly where you would you to use this okay i mean only parts of it because you you need more than that for a block swapper but mm. definitely have an abba gate in there in there somewhere okay all right okay then next we have the rs knowledge RS knowledge, some more, some more terminology. RS knowledge, right? Okay. So this can also be used as memory cell. Mm -hmm. So here we just have two droppers facing each other with an item in them, and we take an output from both. Right. So if we click the bottom button, the the output will switch. Right, because the item is across. If we click the same button again, nothing will happen. But if we click the other button, our second input, the output will switch again. Nice. Okay. And then we have sense. another very basic one of those here. I think this was the very first one with the two torches. Mm -hmm. So this this is the kind of thing. So when when people say um, they've got a contraption that's got spam protection, so that would they have something like this that stops you pressing the button multiple times? That having... would, for example, be something. You have something connected here that let's reset it. So you have something with your input here, you want to trigger it, and then you want spam protection so this button no longer works here. So at the very end, once your machine is finished, you would trigger the second input here, right. and your spam protection would have reset. Right. That okay. is actually a super good example. Okay. Awesome. This. Okay. But yeah. I've built up another little one here. Mm -hmm. This looks so cool. What, this is basically, this will just detect once the chest is completely full, it will empty it completely. So let me quickly fill this here up. Was there? And one more stick. And now this would output all the items until it's completely finished. I'm going to speed it up by just grabbing out a bunch of them again. 
Nice. And it stopped. It's all empty. Brilliant. Right, so how does this one work? Let's uh, let's have a look at this. So two co so two repeaters coming out of a double chest. So is there a special is there a special thing here? It's kind of unfair because we haven't talked about this one here. So here we have a comparator mm -hmm. and a redstone block next to it. So right now it's in compare mode mm -hmm. and it's locked by a redstone level 15 sewers. And it will mean it will only give an output if it also gets an input of redstone level 15. AKA only if this double chest is completely full. Ah, uh, right. Okay. And, and then, the rest you should be able to go full. So the and the other repeater here that will just get a power if there's any kind of if there's just one item in here. Is that right? The, the other yep. repeater. Okay. So if I was just put one block in, this one powers, but that one doesn't. So that one would only power once it's fully fully filled up. So then those two pistons are then controlling these um, these observers. So the one on this side, once the chest is fully filled up. That goes into this uh, observer clock, so that will come down, give us an, an observer clock, which will power this block, which spits out all the items. That's that part of it. Um, so I'm just thinking. Oh, I guess the rest of it is for the is for the reset, right? So once that's uh, once that's then emptied. So on this side here, we have a falling edge detector, just flipped around from our first example. Huh? So this will only get an output if the input turns off. Right. So if this comparator here turns off, it powers this block. Ah, so that means it's empty. Right, I see. Which that powers does... this rail. Yep. The observer detects and just pushes the clock up again. Right. So, so that's that's the reset, right. So when it's empty, yes, I see. When it's empty, that comes up, powers that, powers the rail, which pushes it back up into reset. Okay. All right, that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. I'm actually surprised that made sense because I kind of look at this when I first looked at that I was like uh, I don't know what that's doing but actually I think now I can look at that now and yeah I think I get that. Okay then our next very basic circuit is a the most basic randomizer you can build. Hmm? So here we just have a dropper and a hopper facing into it and we have a normal item and an unstackable item in it. Mm -hmm. And then every time we hit the button, as we've learned in the first episode, the dropper output is always random. Mm -hmm. So it chooses a random slot. To output this time it was one one again and here we have three right so depending on which item it selects you can make a randomizer right okay that's pretty cool of course there's loads more ways to do this you can pretty much make a randomizer in this game with everything mm -hmm. so fair warning so just just a just a question there so with this with this kind of randomizer this is a 50 50 randomizer so yep. if you wanted to change like the odds, would you just put a different number of stackables or non-stackables in there? In, so there's in a little here? problem because your unstackable will always give you three mm -hmm. and, your, uh, on the, and your stackable will always give you one. So right. you would have to use multiples of those. Right. And you can, you can do other things. Like, for example, you can dispense shulker boxes, mm -hmm. which then can have redstone level signals from 1 to 15. Ah, right. Or you can, of course, always use multiple of those or a completely different randomizer. Right. So you could just, right. So, right. So with, with a dispenser that would place the, place the shocker box with its items, you'd read the contents of it and then you'd get a bigger spread of numbers to randomize exactly. from. Ah, perfect. But usually if you need more or more accurate randomization, you wouldn't go for these dropper layouts. There's mm -hmm. better things to do. You can, for example, detect saplings, the right. growth attempts. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah, I've, I've actually done something similar to that. So I've, in my single player, so it's a slight digression. That's the, that's what I use to power my my manila and pumpkin farms. I've got a sapling yeah. that grows, and when it when it tries to grow, uh, that's when the pistons fire. Yeah, exactly. Okay, then our next very common basic circuit here we have the most simple block update detector. Hmm. So what's a block update? A block update is pretty much everything you do in this game. You place a block, you break a block. You place or light some redstone wire even two blocks far away from it. Oh, wow. And for example, the flint and steel would be a block update. Right. Yeah, pretty much everything you can do in this game causes a block update in some form or another. And so with here the, we have some. Just, just a quick question. So when with the redstone update you showed there that was two blocks away, is that because yes. whenever... A redstone is it something to do with when a redstone changes its state it doesn't just look around for the the blocks around it it looks at a two like a two block radius or something like that 
Redstone uh, causes block updates two blocks far away because of the way it's been introduced to the game. So it is one of the reasons is the Redstone dust level, but I think it has also some others, really weird ones. But you, what you have to keep in mind is normal stuff only block updates the block you place it in, mm. and Redstone does it for two blocks. Interesting. Very interesting. All right. Yeah. It's just the way it has been done. And here's a completely different way of obtaining the same thing. So here we have a redstone dot that's on and a detector rail that's curving it to the side. So this piston here is not powered because the redstone dust is not pointing into it. Mm -hmm. Yep. So if we retract this rail here, one of the features of redstone dust is that it does not cause any updates if you redirect it. So now we have the redstone dust pointing into the piston, but the mm -hmm. piston never knew that it actually has to extend. Right. So as soon as we cause a block update here, uh -huh. it will extend. Works in the other edge as well. So now we've curved it away. It should no longer be powered. And as soon as we provide the update that was missing, it will retract. Right, I see. All right. <laughs> okay, then over here, I have yet another one. So if we just block update here, we basically, it's the same thing as here, just instead of using redirection, we pretty much just keep the this piston here extended. Mm -hmm. You push this back, therefore it can't extend again, even though it's powered, then right. we just reject it. And therefore, as soon as you block update it, right. it. see. Okay, very cool. Okay, then over here we have another way of doing block update detection and also some other stuff. And it has to do with some certain rail behavior. So as we know, redstone dust, for example, will always cause these block updates two blocks far away. And one of the reasons for this is, for example, if we have both these levers on, actually we have to make this a lot longer, blocks. So here we can see the redstone is no longer on. Mm -hmm. And if we power this as well, mm -hmm. it's all powered. But yep. if we depower it, it will also all turn off. Yep. And this is also partially caused by the redstone block, redstone dust block updates being mm -hmm. two blocks far away. Right. So that it actually knows when to turn off, when to turn on, and how to adjust the power levels. Rails do not have this at all. So here we can see this rail is being powered from all the way back there. Yeah, so with the rail powers from nine blocks, so there's nine blocks along here. Exactly. Rails. And now I'm going to power the end three of them here. Mm -hmm. And then this lever here, this rail is also being powered from the back there. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to turn this one here on. Powers all the rails here on this line. Now I can turn this one here off and this one here too, and they stay powered. Right. So this way we can basically trick the gold rail into thinking it's still being powered. And as soon as I place the block here, those will turn. Right, okay. Just to do it again, power this one, power this one, turn them both on. Right. So if you wanted to, so I think I can see some stuff over there, but if you wanted to use that like to get a signal, you you just point to point a, an observer at one of those uh, uh, those rails, those three rails at the, at the back to get the uh, to get the update. Exactly. Could just put your observer here. Yep. Jump. Yep. Perfect. Yep. Makes sense. Yep. And here to know actually managed to make a resettable nice instant wire using mm -hmm. exactly this behavior. So here we have our main power source again at the very end. And this will be detected by an observer, which is detected by an observer, which just powers the rail behind it. And if we just remove these blocks here, you can see the rail quickly blinking and turning on again. And yeah. Awesome. It's really cool. <laughs> And I would say that's about it for the common circuits. All right, so that covers all of the common circuits that we're going to uh, go over today. But uh, before we leave you, we have a challenge as uh, as always. So this time we're going to leave it a bit more open to you, but we're not going to be so prescriptive. So this time, what we want to do is we want you to try and make a try and make a, a contraption using some of these circuits that we've uh, we've shown here. But if you want it shown in next week's episode, 
Don't make it so complicated that I can't build it. <laughs> That's a little tip. <laughs> now, obviously, uh, if you don't worry, if you're not, if you don't worry, not um, if you're not too worried about that, then uh, obviously go for it and uh, get it in Reddit so people can uh, can check it out and uh, and see the, see the cool stuff. But uh, yeah, um, yeah, if you could make it quite easy to build, that would really help me out. <laughs> but yeah, I'm really interested to see see what you come up with. And as always, try and be creative. And uh, yeah, let's uh, let's uh, see what you guys can do. All right, so on that note, uh, I think it's time to say goodbye. So if you enjoyed the episode, then please hit the like button. And if you're new, then feel free to subscribe. And if you've got any comments or suggestions, get it in that comment section. All right, my geeks, until next time, I'll see you later. Bye-bye.